Hi, my name is John and today I'll be going through why every student should apply for the Opportunity Class Exam or the OC Exam here in New South Wales, even if you're not sure if you'll get in or not. Let's get into it. In order to go through why students should attend an OC class, they first have to know what it is in the first place. So if you're not too sure what an Opportunity Class is, Essentially, it's an exam that students have to elect and optionally take in order for them to have the chance to join one of these classes. These classes are accelerated in learning so that if you are looking to get ahead or if you find that what you are taught in terms of content, in terms of the resource you're provided is a little bit too easy for your child's level, they should try to attend for these classes because it will help them accelerate. There's also a multitude of benefits in regards to that as well. But in terms of actually trying to get in, each school has a minimum entry level score. So depending on your score in this exam, that determines whether you can actually make it in or not. For some schools like Matthew Pierce here in Western Sydney, it's actually ranked really, really high. So it's actually really difficult for students to get in unless you are the cream of the crop while some other schools that are ranked a little bit lower, such as Blacktown for instance, not necessarily saying that they're worse off. However, uh, there's less people trying to go into that school and from an academic point of view, they're just a little bit lower compared to other OC classes. So just like the selective exam, different schools have different rankings and depending on the demand, supply and demand, then the score will change. This can change quite drastically from year to year. However, usually it's been quite constant and they usually hover to where they are. So if you base it off the previous years in terms of the minimum entry level score, that will allow you to have the biggest opportunity to know what schools to actually put in terms of your selection choices to maximize your chances into getting one in the first place. There's numerous reasons why students should go for the OC exam, uh, even if they're not too confident about getting in. Namely, it's because if you actually do make it in, then it can contribute to a higher selective score when you have to do that exam in year six because they have to incorporate the, the school mark element into it. Secondly as well, the students around you, they will make you a little bit more competitive. Most students who attend an opportunity class also do tutoring. So you already know that in terms of a competition point of view, that things are going to be more heated up. And if other people are studying in their free time, your student or your child will also be studying as well to try and keep up. And thirdly, there's a lot of prestige and value into attending one. So if you actually had to transfer into a selective school down the line or whatever the reason, just attending one of these opportunity classes will give you uh, profound benefits in that way as well. So jumping into the first reason is that it will help you tremendously for the selective exam. Three out of the four exams in the selective exam are the exact same as the actual opportunity class. So this is reading, thinking skills, as well as uh, the mathematical reasoning aspect, which is the same as the selective exam. The selective exam portion does have an additional writing component. However, it will give you a pretty accurate representation on how you will perform in selective, which is the ultimate goal. In order for you to increase your chances of getting into a selective school, you have to know your level. And if we follow the CSS framework that I've made a video about previously, you want to be smart and self-aware with your choices. Completing the opportunity class exam allows you to be tactical in the school choices that you put. So you don't always want to just put in the highest schools because if you only put James Roos, North Sydney Boys, etc., etc., and you don't perform that well in the exam, your chances are completely shot. So if you're a little bit tactical and you know that, hey, even on your best day, you won't be able to get into North Sydney Boys, there's no point in putting in uh, James Roos because that's just going to be a waste of an option. You want to make sure that you want to be quite tactical with that. And by completing the opportunity class, that score, you can actually use that as a bit of a benchmark and say, okay, so this test was done in year four. How much improvement has my child done over these last year and a half to year six? And how much can they actually improve? If they haven't done too much improvement, then you already know that in terms of the score, you might be a little bit above average, average, or maybe a bit below average and then you can cater your school choices on that point. There's not many other opportunities and instances where you get the chance to attend your local high school and actually be pitted up in a room full of other relatively intelligent students who are vying for the same thing 
and you have to complete multiple exams back to back. The NAP plan exam is not, uh, not, not the same just because you're doing a test in your own exam hall, maybe in your classroom and with other students in the same grade. However, if you have to deliberately attend a different high school in a foreign environment, um, in being in a school hall that you've never been in before, as well as surrounded by students that you've never seen before, then that makes it really serious. If you have exam fright, or if you want some extra practice for that before you get into selective or even into high school, then attending the OC class exam will be so beneficial for you as well. On top of this, based on the students that we have taught as well, the students who have actually vied for the opportunity class exam have actually consistently gotten slightly higher marks compared to students who only opted to complete the selective exam. This is a relatively small sample size because all of our classes are one-on-one. -on -one. However, it is a really good point to consider because potentially it's the added experience of being in a familiar environment. Or you might even do the same exam in the same school hall in the selective. And lastly, completing the OC exam is more accurate in terms of the difficulty level compared to simply the NAPLAN exam. The NAPLAN exams in terms of difficulty isn't very hard. Um, it's not very difficult to get into the top two stages or bands uh, for that particular subject. However, for opportunity class, it's a tough test and your score is actually compared to other students who are likely doing tutoring and are likely relatively ahead in their respective schools. So this will give you a pretty good indication on how you will do in the future. And if it's me, from a tutor's perspective as well, I can actually use that information to maximize your school options and to know what schools that you should actually put in in terms of one, two, and three. If you don't have that information, you're kind of doing a stab in the dark. Yes, we can actually give you those exams and you can try to get a bit of a picture, but the opportunity class exam will give you a relatively accurate one yourself. Secondly, even if you make it into the opportunity class, it doesn't mean you have to go. The benefits always outweighs the disadvantages in this case. So I know that in your particular circumstance, it may be different for one parent over the other, but a typical reason that I hear parents why they don't actually try to get their children to attend a opportunity class or to even go for in the first place is because they already have a child who attends that school. So if they had to drop off one child in one school and then drop off another child in another school, it actually might affect their working schedule, might not be convenient, and they might lose some friends. However, I think the important part here is you don't always have to accept your offer if you are successful. In the instance you are successful, you are given options. You have a bit of time to actually decide whether this makes sense for you and your family. If you get a score and you actually make it in, congratulations. You already know that you're smart enough to be with an accelerated group class. But from a logistical point of view, if you legitimately can't get your child to that school, um, whether it be driving there or transportation or you're just not feeling it, then that's totally okay. Because you know that from a score perspective, they can compete with the top. However, if you do the test and you don't even make it in the first place, then that gives you that added information. There's no drawback on this at all. Of course, if it was me and it was feasible for you to actually get your child to attend the OC class, I would definitely recommend it. The benefits are so overwhelming. On that point as well, I touched on friends and friendship groups. Sometimes it is very important for young children, especially in year four, to make sure that they do have a really good social group and people to lean on. However, if this is the only reason that's holding you back, I want you to consider this. They're going to have to go for a selective school or leave schools anyway in when they enter year seven. A majority of the students um, in that school may attend public high school, I mean. However, some may not. So your friendship groups will have to change over time anyway. If you think about it from that perspective, then maybe it's okay for you to attend a different school for year five and six if you are successful for an opportunity class. On top of that as well, you're not always cutting all contact with them. They can still play games with them, uh, whether it be Roblox, Minecraft, the list goes on, talk to them by email, whether it be chat, or even just meet up with them outside of school, whether it be on the weekend, um, they might do a sport together, play tennis, the list goes on and on. So if this is the only thing holding you back, have another think about it or chat with me and I'll be happy The to. third reason what I hear from parents is sometimes they say it's a waste of time and effort. 
I beg to differ. Essentially, parents sometimes, I speak to them and I ask them, okay, so you're looking to try to get your child ahead or want to see how they're performing, but what education goal do they have? And sometimes they say, oh, I just want them to be better. I'm, I'm not too sure. I just don't want them to be behind. It's very important for you to have an educational goal in order to create actionable and concrete steps in order to reach it. If there's no goal in sight, sometimes you're just walking around in circles and you're not too sure whether you are actively improving or if your child needs that extra support. That is why if you don't have an active goal, maybe put nap plan as the goal. So if you put nap plan as the goal, but you're performing quite well in it, then you need to make it an even higher goal. So if you're in, if you're not in year four yet, you're in year three, or just enter year four, or even in younger grades, maybe a suitable goal that you can actually employ to make your child be committed and be excited to actually try to achieve that and to act as a bit of a framework on what you should do in terms of study habits and resources at home is make the opportunity class a goal. Sure. Even if you don't make it in, you might increase healthy study habits that I mean. So you might be reading a bit more every single day. You might be studying a little bit before you wake up. You might be playing less games. So that will have flow on effects in the future, whether or not you actually want to attend an opportunity class in the first place. You want to make sure that your child is not just going through the motions and doing an hour of study here, reading this, but not retaining anything. That is why if they have a goal inside, they're more, even more likely to be a lot more focused in their time and be a lot more efficient with their time as well. Uh, the effort that they can actually put into it, they'll see a higher return. So try to give that a goal if you don't have any education goals in place. So those are my initial thoughts on some of the most popular reasons on what I hear from parents and why they are a little bit hesitant in getting their child to attend a opportunity class or even try out for one in the first place. I didn't go into a deep dive on that, but I did share some of my thoughts and I guess my, my point of view towards that as well. If you want me to give a deeper dive into that, or if you have any other reasons that are holding you back, feel free to write it down in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer. Otherwise, visit thingsacademy.com. Uh, we provide the best one-on-one -on -one private tutoring here in New South Wales in order to get into OC selective or improve your marks dramatically. Uh, but otherwise, I'll see you next time. See you guys.